Ben Baxter, head teacher of the Cooper School, Bister uh, in Oxfordshire. So I came to the school five years ago. At the time, uh, the results as a school were not where they should have been um, in terms of A to C, in terms of A to C, including English and Maths. We'd recently become a specialist school in science, and that initially was the impetus to allow us to invest in technology. That was, in a sense, stage one. We needed to get to that stage. We needed to get to have all staff using the equipment we were putting in place, using the digital projectors, using the laptops, using the technology in terms of tracking students as well, using it from that um, perspective in terms of looking at student data, looking at how students were performing, looking at their progress, ensuring that all staff, starting with heads of department, understood targets, levels of progress, but then drilling it really down to subject teachers knowing where the student was at, what their benchmark figure was, what they needed to do to improve, and how we could help them along the way by flexible approaches to learning, by really focusing on those. Because unless you focus on the learning and teaching, standards won't improve. Um, standards have improved over the five years, in many ways exponentially. We've gone from 41% achieving 5 plus A to Cs in 2005 to 73% last year. And that has been a five-year year-on-year year improvement and that's without playing any tricks without playing any games in terms of uh, curriculum content we've tailored the curriculum we've mapped the curriculum we've altered we've revolutionized and we've evolved the curriculum the key measure of five eight c's including english and maths in that time has gone from 33 percent to 57 percent and again that has been a sustained rise there's no roller coaster and we're not plateauing yet and we don't intend to what was clear about three years ago was we needed to take the next step we were still, I think, um, although we'd given teachers the tools, there was still too much didactic teaching going on, although it's a danger of that. I say learning had been the focus. There had been massive improvements in how learning was taking place and how teaching was taking place. But if we're going to move on to that next level of really preparing students for the 21st century world, we had to, A, invest in the technologies, but we also had to get them using technology as an integral part of their own learning. And it was clear to me that that was the stage if we we're going to move the school from being good into an outstanding uh, learning institution is where we had to go down. This is the technology which students are using. Um, I can remember coming in five years ago having to clamp down on certain things and one of the things was use of mobile phones. Had I known then how technology was going to be developed I would not have been maybe so gung-ho in doing that in the first place because now in a sense I actively encourage why would you not embrace this technology it's a technology which the students have, it's the technology the students use, it's the technology they're comfortable with. Why would you have a situation where you would still now have a student copying off a whiteboard? If that information is there, A, why isn't it on the web? Why isn't it available as a podcast or a vodcast? But even more simply, if there is information which the teacher has put on a whiteboard, which they want to communicate to students, why aren't they actively encouraging them to take their phones out and take a picture of it, download it? Why waste the time writing it? Why waste time? What skills are they learning from that? Unless you want them to just improve their copying skills. The Harnessing New Technology Fund was, was, a, was a source of money which was brilliant as far as I was concerned. Um, we embraced the development of our website. Um, our website now has huge amounts of resources. All departments are using it. We have got lots of blogging going on. Most of the staff of the school are using blogging. Um, I myself have got a top year 10 set. We're blogging because it's instant accessibility. Students are able to write a paragraph on a homework. I'm able to respond to it. Other students can add to it. Other students can see what someone else has written and comment on it. It's instant, it's immediate, it's the technology they're using and it's also driving through improvements in their learning. Vodcasting takes place as a matter of course. Podcasting of lessons for revision also is there. It's there for all time, it can be developed, it can be used, students can access it in their own time. We've also invested heavily in netbooks. There are over 260 netbooks in the school. They're being used lesson by lesson, they're being used in all the core areas. And it was automatic to me that this is a technology which A, the students learn, we can, we've got Wi-Fi throughout the school. They do twice the amount of work in half the time. Now, that to me was a no-brainer. The students are saving their work, they can transport it home with them. It's making that sort of continuum between school and home just a natural continuum rather than an artificial break. 
obviously you need to take stuff along you want a journey like this um, you need to take all stuff and you have to accept the fact that stuff with different levels of confidence and competency in using technology one of the ways we got around that was we had a working party called driving new technologies um, which was voluntary uh, it started quite small it grew and it grew. We were running weekly sessions led by staff who were delivering in terms of the technology they were using. So we would do sessions on smart boards, interactive boards, we'd do sessions on the use of chroma keying, we'd use sessions on how the netbooks work most effectively, we did videoing, we did podcasting and vodcasting, and we gave individual teachers the tools to go away and develop it within their own subject areas as they saw fit. You can't just say to staff, this will benefit you, this will improve the learning outcomes for your students. This will actually stop you working as hard because the students will take ownership of it. They have to see it work, they have to watch it work, they have to see the outcomes and staff are not stupid. Staff will see something and they will buy into it if they recognise that A, it's a it is a quality uh, product which will help their, in their own environment but they also see student outcomes. You can't fool them. If it's not going to do that, they won't buy into it. Until they actually see it working, they won't believe you. This is not now the technological age. This is not the age of technology. This is the age of learning. And if as school leaders, we do not embrace that, we are in danger of losing a whole generation of learners because that is what they learn, that is how they learn, that's the preferred learning style. If we don't buy into it, then they are going to increasingly see a lack of relevance in school and a lack of the relevance in what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis.